And here we have a quart of epoxy mixed and already have the tube in. Uh, ink infusion, a second ink infusion line, and our vacuum out into our disposable catch box. So we're going to pull the trigger right now. And that's the end of the ink infusion. Actually have had quite a bit of resin already come out into the part. And I have another quart of uh, resin already mixed that we're going to dump in there as soon as we have the space to put it. And this is uh, what I've always referred to as a stepped infusion. Um, it's actually possible to cut vacuum on this line, though I haven't done that. Um, on larger parts, I often do, and there'd always be vacuum on the last line out. But um, we'll draw this resin to where it makes contact with this feed line, and then we'll clamp it off and begin to infuse from the second port. Then we get the, uh, the infusion completed quicker, and we seem to get, uh, get better wet out of all the material. Uh, less porosity in the part, and all the good things they're looking for from the infusion without any issues. Be with you in a bit. Okay, so we've added that second quart of resin into our, our feed uh, on the first ink infusion. And one of the things that I really wanted to, to point out about this particular infusion and, and the method that I use to uh, fabricate these parts, you'll notice that there there is no uh, spiral wrap around the perimeter of the part. Um, if you were doing a center out or a perimeter in to the center, obviously you'd have the means of, of having vacuum or resin all the way around the part. But when you're doing um, an edge across to an opposite edge, it really isn't necessary to do that. Uh, the flow media that I use is, is a um, an actual three-dimensional mesh and I like it a lot better because it's very soft and supple and it really feeds the resin well. So we have um, no issues at all getting good um, vacuum all the way across the part or pulling resin all the way across the part. Uh, typically we can pull somewhere between 36 uh, to 38 inches from the feed before we have to have an, an extra feed. So that's, um, that's kind of the planning that I use. I'm going to get ready to swap this line over, and as soon as we do, we'll uh, come back to the video. Okay, the work that I had to do in that pause was uh, mix another quart of resin. And as you can see, the uh, resin has flowed to where it's just beyond our uh, fill line, and the first one is now clamped off. So we're going to open this port and continue the infusion. The air that was in the hose kind of goes everywhere, but it dissipates and has really no effect on the part. And we got a little tiny leak coming right here. And that seems to stop. And also there's um, a little bit of visible air that's in the flow media up here, but uh, that should all work its way out as the resin continues to flow to finish out the part. It's amazing to me how consistent the flow line is whenever you're doing a part that is quite irregular. There's a lot of geometry to this part. There's also, uh, you can see the protrusions that create the louvers in the engine cover, those three uh, bumps there. And even though you have all of those things for the resin to go in and around and dodge and have to deal with, 
you end up with a very consistent line in the infusion. So that top up there will obviously close out. You can see how it's trying to hit that corner. And then that whole thing, just like closing scissors, that whole thing will just completely close out. Uh, pack it in up. So I just added the last of that third quart of resin to our, our fill uh, pot. And I'm just kind of going to watch the uh, the close out of this narrow section up here, working back towards um, our vacuum. And ultimately what I try to do when I plan the, uh, the plumbing and how I'm going to go about infusing a particular part, I really prefer to do um, a scenario where I'm working into a diminishing dimension. In other words, start at the big end and go to the small end. But um, because of the way this mold is used for more than one part, it's really difficult without a bunch of hills running everywhere to um, have the air evacuated from the top of the part. So it's just as easy for me and works just as well to go across the part. We're still coming into, because of this pointed corner, a diminishing dimension. And all of that up through there is completely closed out, just the way I described that it would. And this is all going to continue right on until there's no air left in the part. And then at that point, we clamp it off and go on to the next part. We have another one under vacuum. There's two of these on the helicopter, the left and the right. Um, we're going to infuse them both. And as you can see, we're coming right down into the very last of the infusion. So I'm just going to let this video run until we literally close this thing out. And uh, then we'll edit all these segments together and hopefully put this on YouTube. Beautiful, consistent resin flow. All the air is evacuated out, and we have a fully infused part. And just for your information, this is a two core two, uh, 5.7 ounce twill carbon, and the core material is Lantor Soric LRC, the, the aerospace grade low resin content core material from Altec. Love that stuff. Here we have the uh, second engine cover for uh, the Safari 500 helicopter, and it is just the mirror image of the the part we previously infused. Um, resin's full. We're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on this one. Let that flow for you. One of the interesting things that you'll notice is it really doesn't care. Um, the dynamic that goes on, uh, physics works every time. Uh, you notice the resin runs backwards away from the vacuum pump. It's going to uh, displace that air that's left between the fibers and do the job that uh, you need it to do. Just works. Um, if you enjoyed these videos, I uh, hope you'll look at my website, carbonfiberwv.com. And if you ever have any questions about uh, infusion or you just want to talk composites, get in touch with me. Give me a, an email or find my phone number on my website and give me a call. Always looking for new and interesting projects to do.
This is Brian Alley, owner of Carbon Fiber Composites. Hope you enjoyed it.